Welcome to the Ottawa Experts. I'm Alfonso Quadra, your host. We have a very special program today. We're talking about how to take a dream to the big screen. And there's no better experts to show us that than our very own Ottawa filmmakers, Rock Haven fi uh, uh, Films Pictures. Pictures. We have Fernando, Martin, and Rick, and this is, I mean, I'm so excited about this, uh, this one interview I'm gonna do, so I'm like, oh, I got all my <laughs> questions ready because you guys had a dream, and now you're taking it to the big screen. And along the way, the story kind of unveiled itself to you. But before we get into all that, you know, the, the, the premise was, okay, there's this guy, he made a movie, the worst movie in history. Is that, is that true? The worst yeah. movie in history. So you guys decided to make a movie about the worst movie in history. I want to hear about how all this came about, but give us some of that, you know, how you got here. We're going to start with Fernando. Fernando, how did we get to this point? Well, to, to, the, to the point where the, we, we discovered, <laughs> actually it's Richard discovered the worst movie ever made, <laughs> which is The Room. It's his fault. Uh, so yeah. we, we have The Room here. Yeah. Oh, uh, by, the, by the way, guys, uh, we are giving away copies of this, and you know what you have to do? You have to call us, 613-728-1001, uh, 623-728-1001, and we will send you a copy free for asking a question to one of our filmmakers here today. Uh, so you can do that anytime. Also, uh, hashtag the room Ottawa, and the Twitter handle is at Alfonso13, at Alfonso13, and you will... Uh, we'll contact you for uh, some further promos with that. But you can, at any time, you can send in your questions. But let's hear the story. So basically, so, so our movie that we're making, mm -hmm. uh, which is called Room Full of Spoons, yeah. so it's a, it's a documentary on the worst movie ever made, uh, considered as the worst yeah. movie ever made, which is called The Room. Now, Richard uh, saw this movie about four or five years ago. Yeah, in 2010. And <laughs> and, and he was so excited about this movie. He's like, he, so he called us immediately. He's like, guys, we have to go see this okay, movie. Okay, but wait a minute here. Let's let's uh, let's pause right here. Yeah. So you hear this movie. The worst. Usually, someone says this is the worst movie in history. Most people say, I'm not gonna watch that movie. But you said, I want to watch that movie. You see, typically, <laughs> like the worst movie ever made, you're gonna think it's unwatchable. But there's something so incredibly watchable about the room. It's yeah. It's it's widely accepted as being the worst movie ever wa ever made but it's also the most addicting and the most like the most fun movie <laughs> okay, to watch okay so i discovered this movie in uh, 2010 i was playing at the mayfair okay the mayfair in ottawa every month they put out the um, little calendar of what's coming up and i saw this man's face hmm. on tommy wizzo tommy, tommy wizzo that's right so hey. it's his face on the on the calendar and i said okay what's this and it says on it the worst thing ever committed to celluloid now, wow. I've always been a real big movie geek, so I'm like, <laughs> how come I don't know about this? Right? <laughs> so, uh, so I go to see it at the Mayfair. It's absolutely incredible. Now, if you don't know about this already, this is considered like the new Rocky Horror Picture Show, where wow. people go to the theater dressed up like characters. So I guess it's, it's more about being interactive. It's more about the, the experience rather yeah, than the actual movie itself. Because yeah, I have to be honest with you, because I was preparing myself for the interview, mm -hmm. and I did go online, and they give they have the uh, that clip uh, I told you about. What, what, what is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, the clip where it just shows uh, yeah, so what they do it, a review for it. And it, I have to agree, it does look like the worst movie <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in history. So this is just like it's it's like wow, you guys went on this incredible journey. So can, uh, we'll go back to Fernando. So well, it's it's one thing to watch the movie alone at home, you know, if you, if you if you get the DVD, and it's an it's a completely other thing when you watch it in a theater. Uh, filled with fans, and they're going crazy. They're throwing spoons, and they're, <laughs> you know, screaming, <laughs> screaming out obscenities to yeah. the screen and stuff like that. So, uh, so, so basically, the way it started is well, li like I said, Richard uh, watched the uh, the movie for the first time. He contacted us. He says, "Guys, we gotta, you know, we gotta see this movie." Uh, we immediately, you know, we, we fell in love with it, and especially mm -hmm. for the with the experience because mm -hmm. it's more of a experience than just watching a movie, and that's yeah. why this movie is being watched you know, several times. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we've met people that have seen the movie 10, 20, 50, 100 times. Wow. So, <laughs> so it's really an experience that, that, needs to be, that needs to be lived at least yeah, once yeah. Uh, in, in, in your lifetime for any, like, movie buff or movie and, geek. And from seeing some of the, Im the images in the video footage that I saw, these, these cinemas are not, uh, are, they're not empty. I mean, this is, no. these are packed. Yeah, these are packed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, does the, is Tommy Wiseau, 
he's receiving all the proceeds? Like, is he really making? Is he making money yeah. from from the from the worst movie in history? Yeah. He's, he's, he's making money. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, he's independent. So, so, so yeah. really, uh, essentially, he took a dream to the big screen yeah. in uh, a he, he tempo, own, and it yeah. doesn't. E it's really incredible. It now, took a while. Now, okay. So, Martin, you are the. Uh, I guess you're the the f f uh, the videographer, D director of photography. Yes. Uh, okay. So, what is what? How did you get involved? I, uh, Rick brought this to us. <laughs> we so he's the, he was the brain, he had yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the idea, he had the dream. That's right. We <laughs> pitched the idea to Tommy uh, a few years back. And from there, it's just, uh, we've been uh, filming on the road uh, for the last four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically my job is director of photography. Uh, so filming everything, documenting wow. everything for the last wow. four years. So it's four really years. consumed our lives, yes. Wow, wow. Yeah. So give us your, your, how, your story. I want to know how you got, how did we get here today? I mean, you guys just came back from Europe. Again, mm -hmm. you did a quick starter campaign, raised funds to complete the movie. You guys got flown to uh, Europe mm -hmm. where you continue. This is, this is a phenomenon, right? This is not like just in Canada no, or the this US. this is not this just a Canada <laughs> thing. This movie is playing in, in many cities worldwide. It's has in, a huge incredible. fan base in Europe and Australia, all over America. And so give us the story. First of all, the, let's start at the dream part, you mm -hmm. know, because uh, you had uh, ambitions of being a filmmaker before mm -hmm. the you, you became a filmmaker. Right. So let's, let, let, let's give rewind us the, a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah, give us the, yeah. the, the story. So for, my, so for myself, well, I've always been a film buff. I always knew that I wanted to become a filmmaker, but it's like, but well, you know, how do you make that happen? It's not the easiest career choice. You know, a lot of people, you know, we have the term starving artist. You know, you know we always think like, okay, uh, I want to become a filmmaker, but maybe it's, it's smarter for me to do this in school or, or more productive to do this, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I actually, Early on, maybe when I was about 16, I even volunteered here at Rogers as a cameraman. And uh, so that dream was always there. Uh, if we fast forward to, uh, I was maybe in my mid-20s, uh, an old friend of mine who I hadn't seen in a while was on the cover of a popular magazine here in Ottawa and she was holding a camera. And I thought, wow, I said, well, she, she'd become a filmmaker. How come I didn't become a filmmaker? Why, you know? Mm -hmm. So I contacted her and she ended up mentoring me. So I worked on a couple uh, music videos with her and some short films. Uh, you may be familiar with her. Her name is Tasha Waldron. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So uh, she mentored me. Devil's Candy. Devil's Candy. See? That's correct. I yeah. Know, I, was, I know uh, my Ottawa that's right, that's films. Right. Okay. So yes, yeah, so I was the assistant director on that film, and um, so from there I, f I figured, okay, well now maybe it's time for me to do my own movie. And I was just looking for an opportunity. So the three of us, uh, you know, we came together, formed Rock Haven Pictures. We did uh, a couple of music videos together. We worked on some short films and yeah. stuff like that. And then it was time for our first feature film. And we were trying to think strategically, what can we do together with, you know, the resources that we have and the skills that we have and to, to you know, make a project that would be really worth, uh, you know, worth our time and energy. So that's when we decided on Room Full of Spoons. After discovering this movie, we figured, you know, this is such a huge phenomenon. This is something that we want to share with the world. So we never knew at the time how big it was going to grow. But, uh, you know, here we are now. We're, uh, you know, we've, we've gained, uh, you know, international I, I, I know attention. There's, uh, I, you, there's, uh, Seth Rogen is getting into the game, too. He wants to make a movie about the room. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so there was a... Has he reached out to you guys or...? Not yet, but we're actually waiting till we got back from Europe, I think, till we reach out to uh, James Franco and Seth Rogen, who are yeah. making a movie about the room called The Disaster Artist, which is now it gets complicated. It's based on a book about the behind the scenes of the, the making of The Room. Wow. Now yeah. that mm -hmm. book was a bestseller <laughs> and they optioned the film rights to that. So our projects are sort of, you know, well, they're, they're you yeah, parallel. Well, yeah parallel. there's a parallel between our projects right wow. now. Now did you find it amazing that nobody has done a documentary about this yet? Yes. Well, I mean, it's such a phenomena. It's, a just, lot, a lot of teams it's just tried, weird. Yeah. Isn't it just weird? Like the worst movie in history is the best selling. You know, it's, yeah. I mean, it's, beca it's not like the best selling like, like Spider-Man, right. but this guy is making real legitimate money. Yeah. No, it's the Absolutely. longest running theatrical yeah. release. It's been in theaters now for since 03, so that... Uh, it's over 10 years. Yeah. 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 So this guy, Tommy Wiseau, mm -hmm. the question is going to come, I'm sure it's come in other interviews. Did this, is he a mastermind? Did he, <laughs> <laughs> did he, did he plan this or is just a fluke of nature? You know, like, what, what's the deal with this guy? The only way I could sum that up <laughs> <laughs> is, 
<laughs> is to call it divine intervention. <laughs> okay? You could take all of the world's best filmmakers and put them in a room and say, make the worst movie ever made. And they couldn't make anything that even comes close to, to you know, rivaling the room. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it would be really fun to say, like, yeah, he did it on purpose or something like that, but it's absolutely impossible because he breaks every rule of filmmaking. The, the <laughs> acting is really bad. The dialogue is bad. But there's just there's still something almost unexplainable about it. And even calling it the worst movie, it's, it's hard, to, it's hard yeah. to, to call it that, right? Because yeah, we've yeah. seen it, what? How many times have we seen it in theaters alone? Right. 30, theaters 40 over, times? Over, so yeah. what's with the spoons? What's, what, what's going on with the spoons? Like, I, if I go watch this movie, I'm going to throw, a, I'm going to pack spoons? Yes. Spoons stems from, um, there's a gentleman named Michael Rousselet in Los Angeles. He discovered the room and basically, um, with his friends, he got his friends to go see the screenings and it started to gain pop popularity slowly. And then in the actual movie, there's a lot of uh, picture frames from the set design that they never actually change the actual pictures. So you have pictures of spoons throughout the actual set. <laughs> it's like so a stock photo. Yeah. Right? yeah. So now Michael Russell and his friends started yelling out spoons. Oh, wow. And that's where it comes from. So people would show up at screenings with plastic spoons and basically throw spoons at the screen. <laughs> and that's where it comes from. And it wow. became, became something then, you yeah. know, yeah. screening after screening after screening, and then week after week, month after month. Wow. And then it just became this whole thing where oh. everybody, you know, every time you go see the room, <coughs> you bring your bag of spoons. And then when you see those picture frames, wow. when you see those spoons during the movie, just go just crazy. But they go crazy. Yeah. That is like in places like Copenhagen, where we visited, they started throwing pillows during pillow fights. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. in the movie, they throw uh, pillows, balloons during the party scenes. Yeah. It's and there's this. What's this thing with the football? They throw the football around. I guess it's a scene in the movie. Oh. And everybody scenes. and people yeah, dress yeah, up. Yeah. yeah. So it's just this whole like quirky yeah. thing that people go through. I mean, uh, I just uh, spent this weekend in traffic because of the Comic Con. <laughs> now, is this yeah. something that could make the Comic Con? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. It, it is something uh, that, yeah. that. I mean, I think they go to Comic Cons. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them, at least around the LA, uh, San yeah. Francisco yeah. area. Yes, in, in, yeah. in those areas, and their booths are like the, the the room booth where Tommy Wiseau is is at, and you know, talks with fans. I've heard from fans <laughs> that go to Comic Con, and his booth is always packed with people. Wow. Now, I don't know about Ottawa. He hasn't been to the what Ottawa Comic Con, take on in LA, yeah. What is his take on you guys doing this type of documentary? It's, it's controversial right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have, uh, I mean, we have a relationship with Tommy. You mm -hmm. know, we met him early on. Uh, as Martin had mentioned, we had pitched the documentary to him early on. He thought it was a great idea, but I think at the time he thought we were just going to make a 90 minute commercial for the room and talk about how awesome it is which is essentially what we're doing because we're really you know we are big big fans of this movie and big mm -hmm. fans of Tommy Wiseau uh, as the project grew and we started interviewing like some of the cast and the crew not everyone had favorable things to say about being in the worst movie ever made right mm -hmm. so I mean that's understandable that that, uh, that, you know, there was a, a little bit of, uh, of controversy there. And since then, Tommy's changed his view on it. So we're still talking and yeah. still, you know, we, we still have a decent relationship, but it's not, uh, he's not a part of the documentary. I don't think Tommy expected us to go digging in so much into yeah. how the movie was made. And even now into Tommy's life a little bit, because Tommy Wiseau is the room. Tommy mm -hmm. Wiseau is synonymous with the room. And but th this, we, we have one minute uh, to break. But like this guy raised money to. I mean, was it his own money? Like, how, I mean, how much was? What's the? What was the budget for the room? The budget for the room was six million dollars, and it was all self financed. Wow. Six so, million. is there any backstory of how we came to have? Well, Six these, million these, dollars. these are all the questions the fans <laughs> have been asking for. Yeah. You know, where is where is Tommy from? Yeah. Where did he get his money? Okay. You know, so there's so many questions that for the past ten years Tommy Wiseau has been, you know, avoiding. yeah, avoiding and <laughs> deflecting <laughs> these questions, and he's one of the most mysterious guys in Hollywood right now. Wow. Uh, and this is, wow, I guess, wow. one of the reasons why Tommy Wiseau isn't a hundred percent on board with our particular project mm -hmm. because. He knows that we're digging in. He yeah. knows that we're getting into the, into the good stuff. Well, guys, I can't wait to ask more. Uh, if you have a dream out there, these guys took a dream and they brought it to the big screen. But we'll have more. We'll find out more after these, uh, commercial, this commercial break.
We're back and we're talking about how to take a dream to the big screen. We've been, ha I mean, I've, you just blew my mind, you know, the, these guys. Basically, they take, they've taken the worst movie in history and turned it and monetized it to, you know, now the story behind the worst, uh, m worst movie in history, how this became, a, a, I guess, a world phenomenon. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. I want to get more, I want to talk more about the how-to part. Because you guys, okay, he, you know, he's, he's inspired. You guys are throwing, you have your spoons, you've thrown it. <laughs> so now you have to make a movie. No, yeah. what, do you, what did you do? You know, did you, you know do you have, did you have resources? Like, what was your step? Did you just start right away or how did it work? How did, how did it come well, about? I guess uh, e each one of us has, a, you know, a different background, either in our, in our education college or, or whatever. But, um, for example, for, for me, I, I've always wanted to be in the movie uh, business or the TV uh, industry and uh, I had um, right in, in high school uh, uh, I knew that that was the the area where I wanted to go so I, I did go to college and I, I do have you know degrees in in uh, in, in video production and in film production so already this was already part of you know my my background I think it's similar with uh, with Martin and then uh, with with Richard you know with his knowledge and his passion yeah. for for movies so I think the, the 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 three of us and also the three of us being best friends for so long mm -hmm. I mean it, it almost came naturally that we would all get together at yeah. one point and and combine all our different talents and wow. and start a, a production company yeah. uh, which is called uh, Rock Haven Pictures so so uh, as for you know resources, first of all, I'm I'm more into the the editing part, uh, editing special effects, uh, 3D animation, uh, motion graphics, all these things. So that I already you know carried that you know that baggage with me. So that's that that's the part that I bring uh, to the uh, you know to the, to uh, the party. If any if anybody out there wants has some questions for these filmmakers. Uh, we're going to send them a copy of the room, right? We're going to send right. them a copy. A couple copies, yeah. Uh, what, what, what can they find? What can they expect to find in this uh, in this movie? In the what, you know this DVD? Should they have their their spoons ready? Um, <laughs> I don't know if they'll be throwing spoons <laughs> uh, watching it on DVD at home. But, but at you, you, I mean, maybe they can have a house party. You know, get the spoons yeah, ready. Yeah, house party. And but yeah. uh, the number to call is 613-728-1001. 623-728-1001. Any uh, anybody that calls, they will receive a free copy of the movie. Also, you can tweet uh, tweet at Alfonso13. Our hashtag is the Room Ottawa. The Room Ottawa. So, you've now you've you guys have a, a like a dynamic team, editing, photography, writing. Now you do need some funds. You do you know? So at, at first, I think it was self financed for a bit. Yes. Then yeah. you reached out to Quickstarter. Now, for the people out at home, they, don't, they might not know what uh, Quickstarter is. Can you give us a little bit of a background in how you got involved with them? Well, Kickstarter basically is a, um, is a, is a crowdfunding uh, platform where people uh, that have different projects, it can be a, a film project, it can be, it can be like an, an inventor that, that has a particular project, it can be a writer, any kind of uh, project uh, that you want to uh, that you want to monetize, basically, or that, that that you need funds to, to, to be able to realize, uh, you go onto their pro to their uh, website, so Kickstarter.com, and then you present the project, and then it's either uh, accepted or not, and then from there, uh, your your basically your your project is 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 on their site. Now it's your job as a um, as the creator of the project to promote it. Now you, now if you, you need to basically become a, a social media guru, and I think <laughs> you're, you know you know one or two things about that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and 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 from there, what you really have to do is yeah. So you have to go on Facebook, you have to go on Twitter, you have to go on uh, Instagram, all the different social media platforms to then try to advertise as much. Not only advertise, but uh, try to um, uh, create or have a fan base. And this doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the Kickstarter, for example, we, we did the Kickstarter about Is two months ago. Is it something that needs like a bit of a momentum? Oh, like absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Kickstarter, we started the Kickstarter campaign about two months ago, but we prepared uh, at least six months before that. So we prepared uh, on, on Facebook. So we, you know, started uh, creating uh, different types of content 
uh, so that our uh, Facebook fan page would grow and grow and grow. Because we knew that eventually when we go on Kickstarter and ask for funds, they would, go, they, would go, they would go search you out on these platforms, right. and yeah. if they weren't set up or ready, exactly. yeah. it would be, I mean, it would, you would be losing that audience. Exactly. If, if, you, if you have a fan base, or, yeah, if you have yeah. a fan base of, uh, let, let's say, 100 people, let's say 100 of your best friends, well, that's great, but you're not going you know, to be able to, to go get twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 on Kickstarter if, you know, with 100 people. Even if what you, you have the best project, that's yeah. why you need that initial awareness. You okay. really need to, you know, to, to amass, uh, you know, a lot of fans. Keep them engaged. You yeah. have to keep them engaged. You have to you always be able to, yeah. to so give them something. you guys created something. a video. We created the, uh, a couple now videos. Now, for people yeah. out there that might be looking for that video, how can they find it? Well, uh, if... That, uh, that, uh, I, gu I guess your trailer, it, yeah. it would be... Yeah. It's essentially your, tr your trailer tied into the Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, exactly. Right. So we created, at first we created a, just a little teaser for our, uh, for our project, so for Room Full of Spoons. And then we created uh, another video for the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, so you can uh, go on Facebook, search uh, Room Full of Spoons. Uh, you'll find our, uh, our Facebook fan page. Uh, go on YouTube. If you really just want to look at the, the video, go on YouTube, search Room Full of Spoons, and you'll see the teaser, you'll see the Kickstarter uh, video, mm -hmm. and that'll give you a really a good idea of, of what we're doing and what this whole project is all about. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, for, you, for anybody out there that has questions for these, you know, uh, Rockhaven Pictures, uh, filmmakers of Ottawa. The number is 613-728-1001, 623-728-1001, and you will receive a copy of uh, the film, The Room, not your film. Right. Uh, our film's not out yet. Yeah, your film. Yeah. <laughs> your, 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 the your film that there. inspired our documentary. Okay, so then now, Parktown. Yes. Yeah. I guess he sees a, the Kickstarter campaign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Parktown is a uh, production company uh, Parktown Studios, and I, I guess uh, how I know them is they won the Ottawa, F Ottawa Film Festival for Best yeah. Movie of the Year. Right. It was a um, state, a violent state. A violent yeah. state. Yeah. Okay, so he, I mean, he's he's already in the game, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so tell me how this came about, where you guys are now working with Parktown, uh, already uh, uh, somebody that has been doing this for a while. This is being your first film. So how did that come about? Yeah, well, during our Kickstarter campaign, uh, Richard Towns, the uh, owner of Parktown, reached out to us and said that he's interested in, uh, you know, interested in participating in Room Full of Spoons. I guess he saw, you know, that the project was doing pretty well and was getting a lot of attention. And at the time, we had been published uh, already in uh, you know, IndieWire and Entertainment Weekly and just getting a, a lot of attention. So he reached out and said, you know, how could I be a part of this? And we set up a meeting. The uh, meeting went well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's kind of cool because Parkdown is someone that uh, me personally, you know, I've, I've looked up to that studio for a long time. It's, mm -hmm. it's you know, when I was, uh, when I initially wanted to be a filmmaker, like I'd look up and say, yeah, okay, like, I, I want to be like them. I want to make yeah. movies. I want to win awards at the uh, OIFF and stuff like that. So when you reached out to us, it was pretty flattering. Uh, we worked out the terms and uh, now he's uh, Parkdown or uh, Parkdown Studios or, or now a producer on Room Full of Spoons. We have a, we have a, a question uh, on Twitter. Uh, again, at Alfonso13, hashtag the room Ottawa. But uh, we have uh, Rookie the Kid. Rookie the Kid, thank you for uh, sending your, your questions. Why the name Rockhaven? Uh, oh, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's sentimental. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's sentimental. Um, <clears throat> my grandparents' house, all right, when they moved here from, uh, from Jamaica, all right, they lived uh, in Cantley right outside of Gatineau, and they built their house on rock. So the basement's like a wa walk-in basement, and the whole back wall is rock, and he put a big sign outside of his house that said Rock Haven. Now, my grandfather was a writer. Okay, I don't think he ever really had anything published, but I sort of, you know, I, I took that from him. I took yeah, my artistic a, like side from him. He's like a hobby writer. Like yeah, he, he, yeah, exactly. But so there's so many people, I mean, they just keep all their dreams to themselves. Right, exactly. I mean, they talk about the, the wealth of the world is in the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Because in the cemetery, people have died with their dreams, yeah, right? Because true. they never had a dream and brought it to the big screen. So you were saying your, your dad? My grandfather. Your grandfather. Yeah, he, so he was a writer. You know, I had read some of his, his poetry and some of his stories and stuff, and a very good writer. But, um, you know, he, he had never published anything. And then when we decided to have our, our, uh, our production company, I thought, what better than to call it Rock Haven Pictures to sort of commemorate my grandfather. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. And maybe a little story about... Room full of spoons. Mm -hmm. Earlier, you were asking, 
you know, what, what's the story with these spoons, right? Yeah, it, so it's, it's just like crazy mm -hmm. to me. Everybody's throwing spoons. Exactly. <laughs> Usually people say, don't throw anything at the screen because that's something that would happen yeah. like in, in Latin America, where I'm from. Yeah. People throw things at the screen. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're very engaged. I mean, mm -hmm. the movie is an experience, right? But here, in, in, I mean, go watch the Ottawa Senators. People just like, <laughs> right? Go watch, go watch it at the, at the, f at the forum a, in, in Montreal. Yeah. People really engage, right? Yeah, and that yeah, yeah. is the diff It's the same game, same product, but yeah. people are, you know, so what... It's the atmosphere. Yeah, the it's atmosphere, yeah, for yeah. sure. So e the spoons. So the spoons, well, like, like Martin was saying uh, earlier, so uh, every time that, somebody that, that they show uh, the, the portrait of a spoon, people throw spoons at the screen. At the end of a night in the theater, you, you wound up with a room Full of spoons, <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's how we you know we we, we decided that we we're going to call the uh, the documentary a room full of spoons because it really ties into the room mm -hmm. and then the spoons and yeah so it's a beautiful name it's yeah. a great uh, play on the movie and it's 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 uh, mm -hmm. I mean I mean this guy Tommy uh, uh, Wizzle to me is just like he's he has this like gigantic I'm, I'm, can it be more can how can he grow this brand? Like, what what's next for the room, and what's next for you know for for? Is there going to be other movies? I mean, we did talk about uh, uh, James Franco and Seth Rogen, but how far are they going to take this movie? Is it going to be something that's going to you know like what, what what's next for well, for this for these? Uh, things have been going really well for 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 Tommy, and oddly enough, because he made so he's a, a multi millionaire movie. because of this movie. Um, pretty yeah. much, yeah, yeah. pretty much, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, well, so not he only he, he had a, a lot of businesses before, also, but definitely the room, you know, brought it to another, to brought his fame. wealth or fame mm -hmm. to another level. Wow, I think uh, the fans brought Tommy to another <laughs> level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because That's originally, yeah. because you, you mentioned before, you know, how, how did he make this? Uh, right now, the, the the room is considered like a black comedy. Mm -hmm. But originally, it was filmed as a, a dramatic, like a mm -hmm. dramatic movie. It wasn't mm -hmm. supposed to be a comedy. So he he took something that he made and remarketed it because he saw the potential. Okay, it's not working as a, a, a drama. Let's flip it around and you but know. But let's be honest. Market as how can anybody take this movie seriously? Like, I mean, how can he <sighs> look at you know? It's, I guess you're you're too close to your work. That's. That's really well said. Yeah, that's true. Because he had no outside consultants. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, from all the people that I've interviewed, they said he wasn't accepting any outside help. He's very arrogant as far as saying like, no, I'm directing this. I know what's right. I know mm -hmm. what's wrong. And this is his first movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're making our first feature movie now and yeah. we accept all the help that we can get and all yeah. the mentoring that we can get because we want to have, uh, you know, outside opinions. We don't want to make the mistakes that a lot of full time, uh, first time uh, filmmakers make. But when you have someone that's as eccentric and as hard-headed as him, and they just want to do everything their way, well, sometimes you end up with a disaster. <laughs> you know, he was, yeah. just, he was just smart or lucky enough to yeah. be able to turn that disaster into a into phenomenon. A success, yeah. Into yeah. a success. You guys, know? Uh, I mean, if you guys have some questions, we did get some Twitter questions. Uh, the number again is 613-728-1001. 613-728-1001. We're talking with Rockhaven Pictures. It, you guys have to, you know, we're going to go to a commercial right now, but st uh, stick around for more after this.
We're talking about how to take a dream to the big screen. We, it's, it's, it's just been an interesting uh, evening. Uh, these guys are great filmmakers in Ottawa. If you have a question, uh, you know, of how if you're, you know, have a project out there and you want to take, uh, you know, take the next, take it to the next level, the number to call is 613-728-1001, 728-1001. These guys will be happy to answer your calls. We did get some call, uh, some tweets in at Alfonso13. Again, the, the hashtag is the room Ottawa, the room Ottawa, and we're talking about, I mean, just in the break, we're just talking about how did, how is, you know, because uh, we're talking about somebody else, he, he made a, he deliberately try, tried to make the worst movie, but you can't. Mm -hmm. When this guy's made the worst movie, not on purpose, yeah. you know, so, so let's, let's get, I mean, how is this, how is this even a thing? Yeah, I mean, it's hard <laughs> to, it, it has to sort of happen organically. Yeah. You know, it's, you can't set out to make the worst movie ever made because then you're self-aware and then I think that's sort of, right. yeah, yeah that, that just sort of pierces through, right? People know, say, oh, I see what you're doing there. But yeah. when there's genuine effort put behind a project, then it's almost laughable, you know? And, and you, sometimes you feel bad laughing because you're like, this person did this on purpose, you know, <laughs> was, was trying to make a good movie and this is what came out, you know? Yeah. So I think that's what's, uh, the, what's kind of fascinating about it, is that anyone could take it seriously. Now, is this something that we could do with, you know, for example, the, the last action hero? It, could this be a cult, be taken like a cult phenomena type well, of thing where, you know, because it's, it's really a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen no. the last action hero? <laughs> oh, that's a studio movie. That's yeah, exactly, I mean, exactly I, mean same, can, can, I mean, what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is there any other anything else that can be compared to this? Yes. Okay. Best worst movie in Troll Two. Basically, Troll Two was a movie that was done back in uh, um, late nineties. Late nineties, and basically they uh, have a documentary out now called Best Worst Movie about Troll Two. Yeah. But that movie was done seriously as well, right? So, wow. so <laughs> this, that movie, this, The Room, you're saying it's going to trump this troll business. Yeah, I that's mean, a bigger yeah, fan base. That's <laughs> a much bigger fan yeah. base. Yeah. 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 When, we, when we first started our project, we, uh, we, we actually inspired, we were inspired by uh, Troll 2 and Best Worst Movie. So Troll 2 is the equivalent of The Room. Mm -hmm. And Best Worst Movie is a documentary on Troll 2. And we thought, okay, well, this, I mean, we knew the potential uh, of The Room. We knew that The Room was way bigger than Troll 2 was. Mm -hmm. And Best Worst Movie was an excellent documentary. Mm -hmm. So we thought if we do the same, but with this movie, yeah. it's going to be next level. Now, you didn't start with a Kickstarter. So has the production changed? Have you got had to go back and fix some things based on because you, you had some money injection, like some investing investors? So you didn't start with with funds mm -hmm. so how did you make that transition because some of the funds were to go to Europe yeah. Yeah. right so how does is the quality difference that you had to change as film from film from yeah. from a filmmaker's perspective I don't think the quality of the film changed because of finances I mean our Kickstarter was it definitely helped us and it's gonna help us complete the film do a lot of the post-production that we needed to do and finance our trip to Europe but early on I, I think what really uh, affected the quality of the documentary is our experience. Yeah. Like I said early on, this, is, uh, this was our first feature film. So early on, you know, when we decided to make this documentary, we didn't fully know what we were doing. We had an idea and we knew what, what you no, know, we knew like right from wrong, but we didn't know exactly what we were getting into. But then we sort of had to fight through that fear and just say, okay, we're in this, we're doing this. So we mm -hmm. got cameras, we hopped on a plane, we went to Los Angeles and we said, okay, I guess we're filmmakers now. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we have some of those pictures there. You, you, you've seen some of the, you know, how you behind, behind the scenes. scenes. Yes, so this yes, is a so. four year yeah. project, mm -hmm. yeah. four year. And is it complete? We're done production, so we're done filming. Yeah. So, so four years. Out of the four years you've gone, let's see, let's see the cities. You went to LA? Los Angeles, San Francisco, um, Austin, Texas. Uh, we went to New Alabama, Orleans. New Orleans. We've been to New York several times. Um, uh, and well, obvi obviously, Toronto. Ottawa, Montreal, Toronto. Uh, um, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Oh, my God, there's so um, many. Brooklyn. And then and, and now recently with our, our, our European trip, we've been to uh, Paris, uh, Strasbourg, uh, we've been to uh, London. Is, is, the, is the room translated in these languages? Like it's uh, it's mostly a, 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 an English. Is it uh, like audience. a room like El Cuarto somewhere? Like is there like? Uh, <laughs> it's, fun, it's funny you say that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Because <laughs> we did, we d one of our destinations w it was, was Spain. So we went, we just came back from Madrid about a week and a half ago. And we uh, had the Spanish premiere of the room mm. in Madrid. Okay. Uh, I'd like to mention that we sold out that premiere on the day that the Avengers came out. Yes. Wow. <laughs> so you guys beat out the Avengers. Never mind the Avengers <laughs> when you have the room. Exactly. <laughs> So we so so it was the the, the movie was uh, shown in English, uh, but it had uh, Spanish subtitles. Now uh, it's it's not exactly the same, but the crowd participated uh, tremendously. They knew what they were getting them uh, themselves into. So it was it was actually one of the best crowds we've uh, we've had Absolutely. in Spain. Yeah. Give me some give me some juice, like some some crazy things that happened to you as a result of tr doing these travels. You know. You must have really, I mean, I can imagine that uh, the person, the typical person that is into uh, watching this movie might be a little, I guess, ex eccentric or different or, you know, so what are some, I, I'm sure you have some, st some stories of s some things that happened to you making this film. Uh, well, it's. I don't know if we have any specific stories, at least that I can remember off the top of my head, but I mean, it, there is something to be said when, you know, a couple years ago, we we're just talking about making a documentary, interviewing a few fans, going to a few screenings, and then one day you wake up and you find yourself traveling all over Europe, and mm -hmm. there's, you know, crowds of people waiting for you after the movie and asking you questions, like, wait a minute, like, how uh, am You're I suddenly interested? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, how am I suddenly <laughs> interested? Like, oh, I've been following you wow. on uh, Facebook for three wow. years, and so it's kind of funny to, to you know, we start off like with a dream, and then a few years later, like, wow, I actually have like fans, and not only just here in Ottawa, but like people around the, around the world, world that wow. want to meet us and want to know more about what it's like to hang out with Tommy Wiseau, what it's like to meet certain people, and what our experience. What was like it like to hang out with Tommy Wiseau? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, give me the fun. It's no, uh, but what happened? Like, you guys called him up, and you. I mean, like, how, how does this work? Well, we started off with the uh, because I, I mentioned before that uh, we, the first time we saw it was at the Mayfair. So it plays monthly at the Mayfair. I think the next screening is on. Uh, it's the May twenty third, if I'm not so it's mistaken. It's a great opportunity for people to go see it for the first time. So, uh, in talking to uh, one of the owners at the Mayfair, he was talking about bringing Tommy to Ottawa to do just an appearance, just to do an event, you know. So, we as, as Rock Haven decided to sponsor that event. So uh, that's how we ended up meeting Tommy. And uh, our initial goal was just really to hang out with him because he's such a fascinating person. We love his movie so much. We ended up spending a whole week with him and helping him out throughout the event. And then he said, oh, why don't you come to Toronto with us? So we spent uh, a couple days with him in Toronto. And that's when we pitched a documentary. He said, well, why don't you come to New York with us? So it's, it's really something. I mean, yeah, he's odd and he's eccentric, but he's, he's a blast to hang around yeah. Yeah. with. And yeah. he's, uh, it's, it's he's just a superstar, right? Yeah. Mm, Tommy wow. Wiseau. In his world is is a megastar. Mm. He's, he's, he's uh, Ricky Martin. He's, he's uh, Ricky Martin. Martin. He's Tom Cruise. He's, he's John he's Lennon. Sunglasses he's all the time. Yeah. 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 Wow. So in, in in his world, he is a superstar, and that's uh, that's it's almost how people treat him. Also, like the the the, the room fans, uh, the the people that, that that adore him and that continue watching the room on a regular basis, treat him as a superstar. Mm. So being around him for that first weekend in, uh, in Ottawa, that second weekend in Toronto, and then the, 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 the sub subsequent, I guess the, the, the other big event was the, the one in New York that we yeah. went to at the Ziegfeld. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ziegfeld has uh, a 1,200 seat it's the biggest theater, theater it's the biggest independent theater in America, and, and it was jam-packed. Wow. And imagine wow. a crowd of people <laughs> chanting, Tommy, Tommy, wow, Tommy. Wow. So he, he really is a superstar. A yeah. He's a is rock star. It, is it, um, I forget the gentleman's name from American Idol. Uh, the, yeah, he sang the Ricky Martin song. Um, yeah, uh, what yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. I forget his name also, but he sang yeah. it horribly and then became a star because yeah, of how it, bad is it, he was. Is it similar to that? I mean, they are. It's he is a star in his own right. Right. Yes. I mean, to for someone to be famous. I mean, Monica Lewinsky is famous, mm -hmm. right? This yeah. guy is. This guy is. Famous. For the wrong reasons. For the wrong reasons. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, I got, I got some word from uh, upstairs, William Hung. William <laughs> Hung, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah him. But if you have some questions for these guys, 613-728-1001, you will get receive a copy of the movie. Th so, you guys, so, I mean, people out there can get, uh, uh, I guess, the idea of what this is. But uh, from my understanding, it's not even close to... It's not even like going to see it in the movie theater. So there, there is a screening in Ottawa. When, when is the 
Uh, May 23rd. Normally it's a, it's a midnight show, uh, but I, I think they play, it plays around 11. So or how should I prepare myself to go watch this movie? First, you get a group of friends. Gr yeah. It has to be. <laughs> you have to get a group of friends. Guys? Is it mostly guys and girls? Like, what's it's the demographic? Mix. Yeah. It's a mix. 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 It really doesn't... Uh, okay. there's, there's nowhere... They don't discriminate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but th and there's no, like, like, niche demographic either. There's, yeah. you know, older people, younger people, you know, boys, girls, men, women, everybody goes and everyone has a good time at the room, yeah. so... Bring, 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 bring some plastic spoons. That's so bring that's some spoons. How many yeah. spoons should I be? 200. <laughs> that's, that's a safe number. It's, it's that's literally you, have safe to, you have to bring a bag of spoons. <laughs> go, so go, if, go to Costco. if I show up with my bag of spoons, I'm not going to be the odd one out. No, Everybody's no, no, going to no, 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 no. be the odd one out if you come without spoons okay. or if you come with forks. It's okay. <laughs> not good either. You don't bring metal spoons. Oh, okay. plastic, plastic. That, that would be... <laughs> <laughs> you have to be safe now. Yeah, you have to be safe. Okay, so I'm getting a question here on the Twitter. Um, the, the, the question, basically, what they're saying, how can they find this movie, your movie? Like, is it going to be on Netflix or...? Um, yeah, so our movie, uh, first of all, the movie's not done yet. So we're hoping to have it out by somewhere between September and November, as I think is fair. Mm -hmm. By the time it's out, we're exploring different avenues right now. It'll definitely be out on DVD, mm -hmm. uh, might be out on demand, and definitely theatrically. So Screenings? Uh, yes, yes, yeah, so it'll definitely be okay. screening in theaters. Uh, probably, you know, art house theaters like the Mayfair or, you know, the Rio. Is it going to travel the festivals? Do you yes, think it's, it's, is it a festival uh, quality? I mean, it's a phenomena, right? So yeah. I, I guess people will be interested. Yeah, we've been invited to several festivals, uh, a lot in America, as a matter of fact. Um, while we were in Europe, we were invited to how many five. festivals? Four or five festivals yeah. already, just, just during our last trip in, uh, to Europe. So yeah. uh, we, we definitely want to explore the, the, the film festival circuit in, in 2016. Uh, but so how does it work? Before the movie, you can release the movie. You have to take it to the festival. You, you can't you can't take a fist, uh, uh, a movie to the festival that you haven't re that you've already released. Uh, that certain festivals. Yeah. Some of some of the festivals just want to have a good time, and they'll be like, "We're the bad film festival," or "We're the bad film documentary festival," or something like that. Uh, others, like of course, like Toronto Sundance or Cannes or something like that, they want to have exclusivity. They want to have like the world premiere to, of the documentary. So these are decisions that we haven't really made yet. And of course, we have a fourth producer that uh, that these types of discussions happen with. Mm -hmm. But uh, definitely, you're not going to have to look too far. Uh, guaranteed, if if the person tweeting is from Ottawa, it's definitely going to be playing at the Mayfair. Yeah. And um, and and anywhere else uh, where the room is screened. Do you do you guys uh, are you guys f feeling that this is going to be the next the next room? <laughs> uh, as in it's going to be I bad? No. Well, no. <laughs> 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 okay. So when we come back, come on, guys, call in. Uh, we have p a lot of people t uh, tweeting some questions. Uh, the number is six one three seven two eight one thousand and one six one three seven two eight one thousand and one they will get a copy of the film. Uh, the, I mean, the, I can't, just even to see the, <laughs> mm, the, cover. <laughs> the cover is just, you know, it's w and I like how you played on with the, your cover with it where it's, you're doing the same kind of thing. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we're going yeah. to commercial. We'll be back after this with more, more of The Room.
We're talking about how to take your dream to the big screen. Uh, if you ever had a dream out there, if you ever had a pro project, uh, an idea, I mean, uh, these guys at Rock Haven Pictures have taken the dream to the big screen and in a very unique way, we were just talking before the break about you know, this phenomena, the room, and how, how they, it's taken the world by storm and it's literally the worst movie in history. So if you guys have some questions for these filmmakers, uh, 613-728-1001, 613-728-1001. I, 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 have I have actually have a question about the, the, uh, the funds that you raised on, uh, on, kick on Kickstarter. Now, we, we got a little bit into it, but I want to I wanted go more into the how-to. Mm -hmm. Exactly what can, if someone has a project, what do they need, need to do? Like, you know, how do they start tomorrow? How can they, can they start tomorrow? What can they do? Absolutely. Uh, anybody who has a, any kind of project, first they have to be passionate about their project. Yeah. You, can't, you can't expect uh, a, a Kickstarter campaign to be successful if in your own uh, soul, in your own mind, you don't think it can be successful. So basically, it's the, it's the audience in like, purchasing your movie before it comes out. Absolutely, because they're, they're investing in you. They're yeah. investing in, in what you believe in. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I I'm not sure if the majority of, the, uh, of, our, of our backers even knew about The Room, but they know about us. And they are confident that the three of us are going to do uh, an exceptional job. Now, what, like, your, your question is, what do you have to do? Yep. Basically, you have to know your product. You have to be 100% mm -hmm. uh, confident uh, and you have to be an expert in what you do. Once you have that, you have to build an audience. That audience, like I said before, you have to uh, basically create it with uh, social, uh, social media. media. Yeah. Nowadays, it's a lot easier to do it than you know, tw 20 years ago, even 10 years ago. Social media today is what allowed us to mm -hmm. have a, a, a successful Kickstarter campaign. So you build your Facebook uh, fan now page. Now, what would this movie be without the ki that Kickstarter uh, f um, funding? Well, I mean, we, we were able to, uh, to, to fund the movie up until we, we did the Kickstarter, so, uh, you know. Because you're doing two things. Mm -hmm. you're, you're raising awareness, mm -hmm. yeah. but you're also raising funds, yeah. right? right? Uh, if, you didn't, if you didn't need these funds, you wouldn't be able to raise these, uh, this awareness. I mean, it's almost, it helps hand, it in, hand. hand in hand, right? Yeah, because yeah, now yeah. people are aware of the project. So, and, and, and not only was, was raising the awareness good for the, for the Kickstarter campaign, but it's also excellent for when we're going to actually release the movie. Yeah. Once we release the movie, I mean, you have all, an audience all, waiting. All, all this audience, the, these people are, are just waiting for the movie to come out. So, uh, so it was like a, let's say a, a double whammo, you know. <laughs> so we were able to to raise the funds for the Kickstarter campaign, and we have that built-in audience now for when the actual movie comes out. But anybody is able to to to, to have a, a, a successful Kickstarter campaign if you're passionate about what you do. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to create um, you know, that, that audience around you, and again, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of work. Like it, it, it mm -hmm. took us at least a solid six months, six, seven, eight months to be able to create that audience, to be able to, you know, to, 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 to create that, um, that, that awareness. Uh, if we hadn't done that, mm -hmm. Kickstarter, you know, we would not have been able to, to to raise, because we raised close to $30,000. Mm -hmm. So um, It's also in the way that you present the project too. I mean, you can have the best idea, but I see a lot of Kickstarter campaigns and it's while the idea behind it might be genuine, and I'm sure that the, in your mind you have a really great movie, but you know, they'll just, some people just get lazy and they'll just be sitting on the couch and say, hey guys, I have an idea. You know, it's this um, whatever, a movie about, um, <laughs> about anything, right? And then, uh, you know, and help me out with my Kickstarter campaign. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I follow the campaign and it, it doesn't do so well because they didn't put that initial investment of time into their... What's like, the difference between Indiegogo and uh, Kickstarter? So both, uh, both platforms are, uh, are crowdfunding <coughs> platforms. Uh, Kickstarter was, uh, the, I guess, the, the initial, uh, initial one that started, uh, I don't even know how many years ago, not probably 10 years. Now oh, that really? I, I, think it's, I think around there, more mm -hmm. or less. Mm -hmm. it's, more popular. Um, it, it's the biggest one. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Indiegogo uh, is also uh, uh, another big one. It's, I would say is the second uh, largest uh, crowdfunding uh, platform out there. Um, the differences are, are, are minimal. 
Uh, I would say the, the main difference is, is that in Kickstarter, if you do not reach your goal, you do not get your funds. So for example, let's say just, let, let's just put you know, figures. If, if you wanna raise $20,000 and you get to 18,000, at the end of the 30 days or 60 days, you don't have yeah. anything. You don't receive. So I guess you, you need to aim to go above. Absolutely. Right. Exactly. And Indiegogo, the difference is, is that they have another system where as uh, if your goal is $20,000, and you weren't able to reach it, you only reached, let's say, $15,000, well, you're gonna get a percentage of that. So mm -hmm. Indiegogo gets, you know, maybe a higher percentage, Kickstarter gets a lower. Mm -hmm. There's little subtleties, but it's, simi it's, it's very similar. Both are very similar. Now, is this, you guys have a second, secondary, pro like a second pro product, a second movie that you're doing. Uh, is this, do you have plans to do this uh, form of crowdfunding as well? Um, for, uh, you, you're talking about our next yeah, movie? Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. We're, we're going to talk about it. So, uh, I mean, I love the yeah. name already. F uh, Five Shades of Red. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, uh, and it's a horror movie. Yes, it's a horror movie. And uh, I think it's right up your alley. Yeah. Right? And uh, are you guys looking for this type of, I mean, you guys are already in production on this movie. Uh, no, we're not in production of uh, oh, okay. Five Shades of Red just yet. Okay. You're we in were. We had started. We did a, a little bit of uh, of, of pre-production maybe teaser a year or ago, yeah. like a, a little teaser or something yeah. for it. And then we decided, said, you know what, this is. We're gonna keep this until Room Full of Spoons is done. Hopefully, with the success that we get from Room Full of Spoons, we're not going to need crowdfunding mm -hmm. necessarily. You know, scary, but you have to use it, right? It's, yeah. it's free. Yeah. Use it. Yeah, <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you use it if you need it, right? Yeah. You yeah. use it if you need it, but hopefully... Yeah. Well, you know, I guess the momentum of the... I guess the excitement of the people being able to support somebody new. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure if Universal Films put a, 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 a quick a quick starter uh, campaign, I'm sure they wouldn't be successful because no, no, no. people would not be so receptive because exactly. it's not... It's, it's, it's really not they're not supporting somebody like fresh. Exactly. Yeah, I mean... But you have Spike Lee that's done it. Oh, he's, he, has he has done it? Well, yeah. And Spike he got Lee? backlash for it, he too. Did. <laughs> 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 but you got to remember, too, Spike Lee has always been an independent yeah. Yes. filmmaker, yeah. right? Yeah. It's just that back in the day, he would go to his family, to his, to other investors and right. to other people to try to get that money. Yeah. Now he can go straight using this platform and it's a tool. get them. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's another so it's tool. Not, it's not, and I don't want to make it sound like a bad thing at all. Yeah. It's just a very easy way to go direct to consumer. So if I yeah. want to buy, you know, a DVD or a book, or yeah. I want to buy your new CD or something, I can go directly to the person who's making it. So mm -hmm. it's not, it's it's a very good tool so in that sense. As far as uh, I guess, I mean, now you've created. This is a business. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've you've you started a company. Now, what are some what are some tips that you can offer people uh, that either they can take it to their they're starting a film company, but bus the business the business uh, the business laws are always the same, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. I mean, you, you what are some uh, setbacks that you guys had? Some learning curves that you guys had as far as a business is concerned. Well, we've been uh, very fortunate in the sense that we're childhood friends. We work very well together. Mm -hmm. So I consider myself the artist of the team. Uh, Fernando being the main producer on the team, he's the business of the team, and then Martin is sort of, the, he meshes he's everything together. He's <laughs> now, I have to give him more credit. Now, yeah. we call him the director of photography, and a small team like this, the director of photography uh, wears a lot of hats. <laughs> so he also does some editing, he also yeah. takes care of sound, lighting, everything. Yeah. So I, I guess I'll go first in the sense that, you know, being the director, being the artist, uh, an easy mistake that first time filmmakers can make is that you don't want to compromise your art and you're not thinking business wise. Now, you're, close to the, you're too close to the product. Yes, exactly. So you care about, and of course, and you have to care and you have to have an artist in your team. You know, it can, a movie is not strictly business, but it can't, sh very few filmmakers who are just strictly artists are very successful, mm -hmm. you know? So you have to think, you know, from an artist's perspective, but then sometimes you have to it's take your art and hand it over to the producer and say, how are we going to monetize this? So yeah. as you guys are getting into, ever get into something heated, like this is, you know, so directions of things, uh, you guys, because I, I it's like, like a, I mean, company, it's a marriage. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You guys are essentially married. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, you can't like dissolve the company. If this, I mean, this is comes out going across, I mean, you have, you have to deal with each other. Yeah. Right. No, it's, it's, it's very true. And it hasn't always been easy. I mean, we, uh, <laughs> you know, we, 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 we stay in small hotel rooms and we travel a lot mm. together and yeah. stuff like that. But I think we have the advantage of having been friends for such a long time. And we all have, I mean, we've been working on this for four years. So we have a very clear understanding of the direction we want to take the project. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to put egos and feelings aside. Mm -hmm. and 
And I, so if I'm thinking, okay, I want to do this, and he's like, then Fernando will say, okay, that's very nice, but the audience will be more receptive right. to this, and you have to be open to that. Right. You know, guys, it's have you had fun? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, time. thank you guys yeah. for coming by. Uh, really appreciate this. I mean, uh, it's it's it's. I'm sure it's it's giving people. A lot, a lot more uh, in inspiration. Mm -hmm. Now, quick quote. I'm going to go one by one. Qu okay, well, you know what? They're telling me we have 10 seconds. Okay. And uh, what's the, the quick uh, 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 website? Uh, so our, our website is roomfulofspoons.com. Roomfulofspoons.com. Yeah. Guys, go get it. Taking a dream, taking it from a dream to the big screen. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.